What up, guys? If you hear any like around, yeah, it's not that we have a team of programmers working in here. <laughs> yeah, it's our dogs. Or tap dancers just, just walking around. Yeah, they so. like to tap dance. Yeah. Um, but we're back and we're gonna film another fun couple video. This is one of my personal favorites, and basically we are asked a question, right? So the question will be like, "What is your spouse's favorite color?" and that person has to answer what they think their spouse's favorite color is, and then the spouse reveals the actual answer, and then they get to see if their answers match up. So it's a lot of fun because then I get to learn a lot about Paw Bear, and I'm like, what? You thought I liked that? Or what? You thought I liked whatever? So it's a really fun discovery game, and I can't wait to play it. One thing I'd like to add is uh, we didn't match hella cute like this on yeah, we purpose. Did. Yeah, we did. No, she I'm wore the tell... dress, and I pulled out this shirt and the dresser, and when I came out, I was like, Oh shit, it no. matches. So we didn't do it on purpose. Yeah, he it did. It was destiny. No, you did it on purpose. He even asked me, he's like, do you want us to match? No, because after I noticed it, I was like, do we want to be like hella gay and match? Baby, or... it's okay if you want to be cute, okay? I am pretty cute. Yeah, he's pretty cute. Okay. I have water in my ears. I just hell? took a shower. Okay, well, it's not like we're filming right <laughs> Okay, bye. All right. Do you want to ask the first question or I ask the first question? You go. Okay. So, what did your spouse think about you after your first date oh what is our first date though that's the question do you consider the snowboard trip our first date mm, uh i don't know what our first date was to be honest but so, I so guess... okay, let's let's when you define a first date do you define it as what's official like this is our first date together yeah. or is it the first event where we have mutual feelings i guess because our relationship is so unconventional and just kind of the way it happened for those of you that are new to the channel basically um, Bart and I were, we were part of a mutual friend circle and we really didn't consider one another attractive or even like, um, our type. And then, uh, I was already in a relationship. He was dating a bunch of girls at the time. We would talk about relationship, whatever, but we weren't like super tight. One thing led to another. Uh, we were both single at the time and somehow we get snowed in, we bond, we turn, we find out that we like each other and like this, On the way to Big Britain, like literally it was like this. We didn't get we snowed, like, we didn't get snowed in in LA. Not in LA, yeah, we were yeah. on the way to Big Bear. Yeah. Sorry, thanks for the clarification. Uh, but literally like this, because I'm trying to keep the snap in. Gotcha. Uh, we just kind of fell in love. So that's what I mean by it's unconventional. So, back to present day. I guess for me, I would say that our first, our first date would be, um, I guess, that snowboarding trip. I think then, after that first date, the first thing that you thought of was like, Whoa, this guy's pretty cool. Um, but what does that mean? Like, I can think a lot of people are cool. No, because I, I, at that point, clarify. at that point, you thought of me as just the homie, like one of the dudes in the friend circle. But I think at that point, you're probably like, man, this guy is different. And there's a part of this guy that I never knew. And I'm interested. Mm, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Well, so I don't know if it was perfect timing or not, but the relationship I had just ended, yeah. um, he was just like a really mean guy. And like, I'm pretty sure I was a bitch too because I just have bitch DNA in me. Mm -hmm. But we just were a very uh, like turbulent relationship. Like yeah. we were trying to change each other so much that we were just, it was just a very unhappy relationship. So I was at the lowest point in my life. <laughs> um, and then I... What are you trying to say? <laughs> so I'm, not I trying to you. I'm not trying to... I'm I not trying to... I only had a chance with you because you're at the lowest point of your life. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, no. I'm not trying to take anything away from you, but I think it was really perfect timing for you because I had seen the worst and the worst. And then to have like this beautiful angel come into my life and then shed some new light on just like humanity because I thought everyone was a piece of shit at that point. I was like, wow. Pub is really refreshing. So you're right. I was kind of like, what the hell? Bart's actually really cool. Like he's not as annoying as Duh. I thought he was. And I couldn't stop thinking. Thank hey. you guys. Wow. Wow. There's, we're filming. Oh my God. Hey, cut it out. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I couldn't stop thinking about him. Whoa, whoa, stop. whoa, whoa. Come here. Stop. You know who's the barker of this, and it's really ironic? Who? It's the one that's the most afraid. Milo. Fawn. Oh, she fine. barks first. Oh, yeah, yeah, she's yeah. the most of, She's the one barking backwards. Okay. Anyway, so same question to you. So, what did your spouse think about you after your first date? Um, I 
don't know if we ever had this conversation about what you thought about me after the first day. Ooh. Um, hmm. I guess because we had such a deep connection so quickly, I think it's safe to assume that you also thought like, wow, Gio is pretty- oh, People stop right there. It's a very concise phrase. And I do remember telling you. A concise phrase? Mm-hmm. Oh man. Oh, I, you're talking to the memory. I know. I have the worst memory. Um, but I guess, can I just say like, um, the gist of it? Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, assuming that we're both as connected as I thought we were in the beginning. And of course, cause we're so connected now. Um, I guess I want to say that you were also thinking similar thoughts as me, as far as, uh, she was a bitch, but wow, like get to know her and peel back these layers. Like she's pretty cool. And it wasn't pretty cool as like, I want to be her friend still. It was pretty cool, like, oh, uh, I can see a future with this girl. What'd you say? Uh, the most concisest way to put it is, Consist. oh, she's not a bitch. Oh, it's like I kind of I thought you were it. a bitch the whole time. You have so much attitude. You have bitch face all the time, and you're just complaining about literally everything. Yeah. Um, but we got snowed in. I got to know you, and then you, you showed me your warm and uh, fuzzy. So you weren't even attracted to me where you were just like, Oh, what I said. No, it was just literally like, she's not a bitch. Well, I always thought you were hot, but I thought you were a hot bitch. <laughs> oh. So, but then now I, I got to know, but then I mean, there's tons of hot girls in the world, you know? Yeah. So I was just like, oh, cool. She actually has these warm and fuzzies inside. And I remember when we uh, actually went to go snowboard, um, I saw how vulnerable you were because you just kept falling down over and over because you suck at snowboarding. But then you were also very, very uh, tenacious. You wanted to get it down. And then I would ask, you want to go to the bunny slopes? And I remember, like, oh, I don't know, I don't need to go to bunny slopes. I'm like, in my, in my head, I'm just like, you're just going to keep falling down wherever I go. But you didn't, you didn't care. So, like, whatever I could, I just kept teaching you. And I remember you told me that I was actually Such one of the nicest. Flirt. No, you said I was one of the nicest teachers you've ever had. And then so. Yeah, because my fucking ex-boyfriend was such a piece of shit that he was just so mean to me. Yeah, I thought it was so awesome that you were just down to go down all the other slopes when you suck at snowboarding. You just kept falling and falling and falling. I thought yeah. it was like really cutie. Thank you. Well, that's good to know. I guess I'm not as big of a bitch as everyone thinks. Okay, next question. Uh, you read it. Question number two. What was it about your spouse that made you realize that they were the one? Eee! Um, so that's you for me. Uh, so I have to answer what you thought yep. made me the one. Yep. I do remember this story. Okay. So, um... Because we were in the same friend circle, he got to meet my boyfriend and he got to see me interact with my boyfriend at that time. Uh -huh. um, and he told me that he recalled how affectionate and like, um, like warm I was with him. So there's this one particular uh, time you said that we, uh, he was driving, I was passenger, you were in the back seat somewhere. And I reached over and just me like caressing him, he was just like, oh, I really like that. And then the more you got to meet me, you got to see all the fuzzies and you were like, damn, she's the one. But I don't know if I made it too general. Uh, that's a good start. The actual instance that made you the one. Oh, I know it now, I know it now, I know it now. Too late, too okay, fine. late. Fine. Was uh, when I saw you interact with your nephews and niece. That was the one? I wasn't uh, gonna say that. What were you gonna say? I was gonna say when we were living, so we were already together, living together, we were probably together for like maybe a few months. And then you said you really wanted to pursue your passions and I was that like, that one too. Oh, so there's multiple. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit. So uh, in the movies, they tell you there's that one thing that makes them the one. That's fucking bullshit. So which one came first? That's fucking bullshit because you need a lot of indicators. If you just make, go based off one whim, you're fucked. Okay, fine. Yeah, but that's one of them too. Okay, fine. So what I was saying was, um, when we were dating for the first few months, I was just passionately, madly, which I still am, in love with him, and um, this was. This was right at the beginning of JK when he was trying to decide if he wanted to pursue uh, med school or do the whole YouTube thing. I just thing. graduated college too, so I'm like a... Yeah, do the whole fuck. YouTube thing, which at that time was like, if you had 200,000 views, you went viral. So it was that small and it was that new that nobody knew where it really was going and no one was really monetizing uh, enough to make like a crazy living off of it. So he was kind of on the fence between both of those. And I remember he was living, or we, not living with me, but we were living at the same place. 
Um, and he had that, we had that conversation where he was like, you know, at the fork in the road. And I said, you know what? Like, you're so passionate about it. Like, I have a really good job. I can support us. Like, if you want to pursue YouTube, go for it. I'll support you. Yeah. I thought that's what it was going to be. So there was that. And then the other one was, uh, I saw you interact with your nephews and nieces. And growing up, like you guys see my parents, um, I had a very, very cold upbringing. So there wasn't too much love. I mean, there's a lot of that super extreme Asian love where mm. I beat you because I love you. <laughs> Perfect. Or I love you, so what I'm going to do is sign you up for six months of intense math class after school. Or I That's go, a different type of love. It's a different type of love. So that's that type of love uh, uh, that my parents gave me. I didn't have the traditional like hugging and nurturing. It wasn't very nurturing. And so when I saw you interact with your nephews and nieces and how nurturing, were, nurturing you were, and I'm like, man, like she's just an aunt, but she loved them more than my parents ever loved me in the nurturing aspect. And I'm like, that's that's exactly what I want for my household and for my perfect timing for me too. Then. And for my kid, yeah. Shit. I've never I never experienced anything like that. Like the amount of love that you had for your nephews and nieces that you're able to kind of juggle them, like. You knew what flavor this one liked. You knew what this one wanted. And then when we went to the movies, like you can balance, balance all of them. I'm like, that was so cool. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay, your turn. Oh, you have to ask me. Uh, okay, what was it about your spouse that made you realize that they were the one? So what moment in my life did I realize that you were the one for me? Oh, yeah. Damn, this is so tricky because it's so like reverse, reverse. What yeah, moment yeah. in your life? In my life. You're Did answering. you realize mm -hmm. that I was the one for you? Yeah, that I shared with you. Uh, probably like the first time you ever laid eyes on me, I think. <laughs> what? Uh, damn, that's a hard one. I never thought of it like that. Right? Yeah, because I just go around like slaying women, so it's just, oh, it's just hard. Uh, what is it? <laughs> what are you, why are you laughing? Uh, when, what is uh, is there a specific instance? I honestly don't know this question. Really? Yeah. I don't know if there's anything that I've ever done that you're like, he's the one. Really? Yeah. I've broken down physical. I broke down emotional. I broke down so many things. Well, you've told me like, I got a thick back. <laughs> and you're like, I can only date dudes with thick backs. So I'm like, awesome. You know, all those Latin exercises. That's your, that's your final answer, fucking guys with thick, uh, thick backs. Fucking paid off. You had the thickest back of them all, and that's what it <laughs> There's was. There's a lot of guys with way thicker backs, though. But I mean, I guess for me, that's your answer for me. I don't remember what else you've said about that. Wow. So is that it? You give up? I don't know. You, might, you can pull something out of your ass, too. Emotionally? You know so well. I don't know. I really don't know. Really? Yeah. Okay, fine. Uh, so... Uh, when we were friends, I always thought he was super annoying, but there was something about him that I, I always was intrigued by. I didn't know what it was because he was my friend. I was in a relationship. I never really entertained the thought, but there was always something really special about him. I really liked how he was not like this dude always chasing after girls, so he was very gentleman-like. Um, he was also the friend that was always trying to connect everyone and include everyone, so I thought that was awesome too. Um, and then... He was also really, really funny. He didn't give a shit. So then the way he dressed, like, he would always have, like, these, uh, like, uh, what is it, knee-high? No, not knee-high. Quarter-length socks. Yeah, quarter-length black socks that were gray because he would wear them all the time. They're my dad's. I love them. Okay, they're, so they're not black anymore. They're gray. He would always wear basketball Vintage. shorts. And then he would wear, like, his Ghost of the Abyss shirt. And he had, like, I don't know, 10 of them that he would always, like, just wear the same shit over and over again. Um, his hair was was always cut because he was in the military at that time, but then he... It and was I just, cut it myself, so I cut it every week. Yes, yeah, so it was always a fresh cut, but then he wouldn't have any product in it, so it would just stand up. So it just, there's all these things about him that I thought were really, really cool, but then once we were snowed in in Big Bear, and I realized that like he was just a really cool person also that just so happened to feel like, I don't know if you guys have ever felt this, but then... Um, maybe with your best friends or even a significant other like as soon as you meet them You feel like you've known them like your whole life. It was one of those moments uh, when we were snowed in and I'm like, holy shit like This guy has to be the one like I've never felt this with anyone else like this is this has to, this has to be it like this has to be like real love true love um, and I think that very moment with the past it kind of came together and then it just kind of solidified how much I love them. Awesome. What? <laughs>
Fine. My turn. Okay. Question number three. What would be your spouse's ideal date? Okay, so I have to answer for you what I think you, your ideal date would be. Um, wow, it can go so many different directions. But his ideal date would have to be... Uh, you've changed so much, actually. Really? Yeah, recently you've changed so much. So Popper has been more about, uh, since we had this new addition coming in, he's been more about just kind of building our immediate family, whereas before it was building uh, the whole, the, the big family, which was our parents, but then it also included JK people, barbell people. So now he's really focused on just us two. So I think, I don't know if I should answer this as back then or as now, but I guess for now, I'll answer that your ideal date with the three of us would be, um, and the dogs, so that's actually the six of us, would be somewhere on a beach, maybe with a bonfire. I that think. sounds fun. <laughs> uh, and then just, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Where we'd take a home-cooked meal or something, like something low-key. Yeah, I really like low-key stuff. <laughs> so pretty much it. Pretty much, I think, I love the beach. I love us, I love our dogs, and I love cooking. So if we can cook, be on the beach, and just be really lazy. So if we want to go in the water, come back out, take a nap on the sand, just like 8 to 12 hours of not really having any schedule, schedule that would be awesome. So that's your ideal for real? Yeah. I nailed it? Yeah, you nailed oh, it. Oh, shit. Okay. I mean, Ma Bear's ideal date is uh, we stay home. And, stay home? Yeah. Oh. And because uh, we're so busy, we don't really get a chance to enjoy our home. Like we love, love our home. And almost every weekend we're like, I love our house, we love our house. And that's all we say, but then it gets occupied with other things. So I think it would be to stay home and then maybe order some food so we can eat both, what, both of what we want and then watch a movie and then bear theaters. And then usually we continue upstairs after that movie's over and watch the dumb show. Oh, I thought you were gonna say something else. No, we watch a dumb show. <laughs> I didn't think this happened. <laughs> <laughs> and then we go to sleep. Oh, that's pretty cute. Me. Yeah. That's pretty ideal. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big introvert, I think. Um, not to the extreme level of introverts, but I'm introverted enough to where if there's more than like three people around me, including him and our dogs, then it's too much stimulus for me and I'm just like exhausted. So I think that's my, my ideal. Like just staying home because I love this place, getting food delivered because I'm lazy as fuck, and just turning off my brain and just getting into a movie. I agree. Yep. Damn. You're pretty good. You're pretty good. Question number four. What is the first thing your spouse would buy if they won the lottery? You should know this one off the top of your head. Buy your mom a house. Oh, I was even thinking that one. What? What was it? That's pretty good. I like yours better than my, what I would actually probably do. No, I think I would probably do that first, but I think my, my imagination got the best of me on that oh, one. Oh, what was it? Uh, so buy my mom a house. I think after my m imagination settles and I come back down to reality, I would do that first. Yeah. I would buy my mom a house. I would buy my family, you know, houses because I know my brother's trying to move out too. Shout out to my big brother who I know is watching this right now. Tito, I love you. Um, yeah, I, I would probably buy them all houses first. But my imagination said I'd finally have that big plot of land. So I can have all, all these the animals. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the lottery yeah. purchase for sure. Right. Um, okay. Yeah, I only know that you want to uh, buy your mom a house because that's what you always talk about. Yeah. You know, like, if I have a, make enough money, one then buy my mom a house. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Good. That was good. You brought me back down to reality because I was already thinking of some wild shit. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing that your spouse would buy if they won the lottery for you, um, reality, you would. What would you do? Four o'clock night bar. Because I know you like a lot of toys. And then, so I think you would probably buy your dream home first. Because um, you get on Zillow a lot. And if you don't know what Zillow is, it's just, a, it's just a site where you can see properties that are for rent or property value. And then you can see how much you know things cost around whatever area you're thinking of moving into. So he frequents that. Um, and and I think I think you would probably buy your dream home. 
Yeah. All right. No. Oh, really? That's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it? Yeah. My, so my dream home, I've been looking on Zillow. Um, it's pretty expensive, but it's not unattainable. Yeah. It's not like 30 million. Yeah. It's not like some million. of those like celebrity houses where it's like you need an army. It's, it's, uh, but if you want to, if you want like $500 million, you still wouldn't buy it. I still it wouldn't. I, like, I don't need a palace. I don't need a hundred rooms. Oh. Like all the, all the houses I look at on Zillow, they're very, I guess the function is out of a normal house, but the spacing is just bigger. You know, like a regular house when you put the bed in. There's only like two configurations because yeah. the, it has to be against the wall. Mm -hmm. The houses that I like, it's big enough where you can put the bed diagonal. Or like in the center of the room. In the center, it's kind of like it's okay. bigger so I can get creative with it. I just want like a little pool. I like want a, a view. So all the houses I've been looking at for like three to four million. So I definitely can't afford that now. But maybe later on in the future, I can. And I think even if I was like, let's say I blew up like Kevin Hart. three or four million in Los, Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, Which is not... Not saying that. It's just, yeah, it's just because it's really you could, a shitty ass house in LA could be a million. Really shitty, like in the hood. Yeah, so that, it's three to four million in LA. Everywhere else in the United States, you could probably buy this house for 500K or 500K to a million, something like that. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm a very practical guy. I just like open space, open floor plan, and like a good feel and good vibes. I don't need golden faucets or anything. What about your imagination? Because you know my imagination got the best of me and I had that answer first. Yeah. Oh, remember that one vlog when we went camping at Nadim's uncle's place? Oh, that's your imagination? I land? would have a big plot of outdoor That's land. a good one. You know who has this? The Baileys. Yes. If you guys follow uh, Rob Bailey and Dana Lynn Bailey. Yeah. Oh my God. He and has he got... a big warehouse. He races cars, Porsches, trucks, got fucking billy goats. Shooting Here. range, all kinds of stuff, and their yeah. backyard is so cool. And it's dope because they don't go hunting because they're vegan. So, all the animals that are on their land, they raise. They, as they use the animals to lure the humans in and they shoot the humans. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm down no, with that. No, they don't do that, but that's what I like Cool. Well, we kind of know each other. <laughs> How awkward would it be if we got all these answers wrong? I think we would have to really have a deep conversation about a relationship. I don't know. We got them right. Okay, fine. All right, well, I guess that concludes our CUNY Q&A. Uh, what do we call this? CUNY Q&A, do you know your CUNY bear CUNY yeah. video? <laughs> yeah. Do you know your spouse video? Yeah. How well do you know your boyfriend girlfriend video? That's a good one. But How what's well the you... most clickbait way to title this? Because <laughs> people don't want to watch a boring ass title video. I don't know my boyfriend, we're breaking up. And okay, then the, thumbnail, and the thumbnail, thumbnail. thumbnail like this. Oh, that one, that one. Yeah. <laughs> Does that make you guys want to click on it more? <laughs> That's the thumbnail. Or should we be honest and like uh, five lukewarm questions that make us learn about each other? That's no, kind of no, cute, no. But not that entertaining. No, we're we're getting too sidetracked. All right. Uh, ultimately, we hope you enjoyed this video. I know again that I love filming these just because I get to take a cruise down memory lane with my big-headed weasel. But yeah, if there are more of these videos that you guys would like to watch, please write them in the comments below. Write anything in the comments below so that we know what you guys want to see more of. I love these videos. I love you guys. And I can't wait to see you guys next time. Adios.